Hi, welcome to this webinar. I'm going to be talking about the three mistakes most women make that sabotage their weight loss goals. This webinar is for you if you want some practical, actionable tips that you can implement in your life straight away. I'm going to make this short and sharp, fast as well, so that you can just take away some practical tips, implement them into your life, and hopefully start to see some good changes. So I'm your host, Nalisha Patel, and so let's get into the webinar. Okay, so the ultimate goal for this webinar is that we're going to be defining the three mistakes that women easily make that sabotage your weight loss loss goals. Um, also, I'm going to be talking to you about if um, calorie counting is actually going to help you lose weight. It might actually surprise you. Um, if you need to eat more or less to lose weight, and also how to balance your hormones. I'm going to talk about the daily mistake many women make that increases the hormones insulin and cortisol, which dilutes all weight loss efforts. We're also going to learn about the most important part of losing weight and keeping it off. And um, we're going to go through all of those things. And so you're ultimately probably wondering, you know, why listen to this person, Alicia? So um, I just want to let you know that I've actually helped thousands of women over the last 18 years to successfully lose weight and change their lifestyles. I um, used to do group training sessions um, and face-to-face -face sessions back in the day, about 18, um, 20 years ago almost. And so um, I started out doing a lot of face-to-face -face training and I eventually moved into the online world um, creating a program that was a little bit more than just diet and exercise so um, it gave me a chance to really work one-on-one -on -one with women cover a lot more things than just doing personal training and I really got to learn about the little things that can be done in a woman's lifestyle to really bring about good results um, I also um, actually trained an editor of this magazine called Next, um, this magazine here in New Zealand, and actually trained the editor of the magazine, her name was Susanna, and um, as you can see in the pictures, that she ended up losing 12 kilos, about 26 pounds, in just 12 weeks. So um, what I'm going to be talking to you about is how I can actually help you, and we're going to also cover off those mistakes in this webinar. So um, I um, actually majored in human sciences and psychology, and ultimately to get the best results, you really need to combine the two. So science and psychology um, mixed together to bring in the mind and the body basically so that you can actually get long-term results. And so that is the basis of everything that I teach. And um, just so you know, Susanna in the previous slide, she's actually kept the weight off for over 10 years. So it's absolutely amazing that, um, you know, just simple tweaks to your lifestyle can actually be kept up. And that is really really the most important thing. Okay, so um, I'll just give you a quick rundown on myself. Um, I actually personally know exactly what it's like to be in the position where you're not happy with your body. Um, when I was about 34, 35 years old, I actually ended up gaining about 15 kilos in a really short span of time. And I was just flabbergasted, <laughs> for lack of a better word, on how and why I was gaining weight. And um, yeah, just the tech, just the t uh, the um, strategies that I had used on my own clients to lose weight, they weren't really working for me. And um, I realized that, you know, as you get older, as we get older and over the age of 34, 35, hitting into our late 40s, I mean late 30s, sorry, hitting towards our 40s, you know, our bodies change. Hormonally, we change how we um, actually live our lifestyle can change and all these things have a domino effect and actually really have an impact on how we feel, how we look and whether our weight is creeping up and if we can actually get it down easily using maybe methods we did in our 20s or even early 30s. They may not you uh, they may not work as um, as well as they did prior to that. So um, I've basically gone through a lot of trial and error to figure out what it is that needed to be done to tweak my body personally over the age of 35 and then I've gone on to help women who are also in that transition period getting a little bit older moving into the perimenopause stage and getting getting closer to menopause basically and that is where what we're going to be talking about how that brings its own unique set of challenges so um my weight loss story where i gained the 15 kilos this was seen in the daily mail and um, i actually got a flood of um interested clients coming through who wanted to be trained also and so i worked with a lot of women and really got to fine-tune my program that I want to introduce you to you in this webinar um, to really fine-tune what needs to be done to really help women in our special age group basically. So um, as I said um, I've got a program it's called the Flat Belly Kitchen. Um, this is all designed 
with you in mind basically this is for women over the age of 35 we have literally different hormonal emotional and physical needs we have different needs than we did in our early 30s forget anything that was happening in our 20s over the age of 35 things do fundamentally shift and change and so it's really important that our training our nutrition our lifestyle habits down to sleep um, how much um, stress relief we get how we um, operate in our relationships basically all these little things they all come together and they just have such a phenomenally different impact on our body than they did a few years prior in our early in our early 30s and so um I'm really big on merging the latest science and psychology backed information and putting it into this um, program, The Flat Belly Kitchen. And it's all about shifting the weight, boosting energy, and really ultimately transforming your health so that it's not just focused purely on weight, but you're becoming healthy first so that the weight loss is a lot easier. So um, with this Flat Belly Kitchen program, I'm ultimately going to be your personal wellness coach, guiding you through the whole process, incorporating nutrition, exercise, and most importantly, mindset and lifestyle habits. So this this is a purely online program and um, I also do the Zoom and video coaching as part of it. So let's get into the mistakes. So the first mistake that a lot of women do that ultimately sabotage their weight loss efforts is that they don't prioritize sleep. And you may be thinking, well, you know, you do actually get sleep, but um, how many hours of sleep are you getting? Is it enough? Are you feeling well rested? And this is something that only you can answer. And it's just important to actually take stock and, you know, actually think about, you know, are you finding it harder to lose weight? And if you think you're sleeping okay, is there anything you can do to actually improve on what you're doing so that you can actually shift your weight? Possibly that could be the one component that could actually help you shift a few extra kilos. So um, have a think about how many hours of sleep you get a night and you ultimately want to focus on quality versus quantity so um, are you waking up refreshed you don't even feel dozy or you know you feel like you do have a lot of fuel in your engine as you go throughout the day on say possibly six and a half hours sleep or seven hours sleep if you do then that's fantastic maybe that's all you need but if you're getting eight hours of sleep but it's interrupted you're finding that you're super tired during the day, then that is something that you need to look into a little bit more because it really is about the quality as well as the quantity to some degree, but quality is really everything. So that's something to think about. So um, one of the helpful tips, that um, some of the helpful tips that I want to give you on this webinar that you can take away immediately is that ultimately you want to really have a good routine before bed. So um, before bed, I'm really saying it's not the half an hour before you go to bed. I'm truly talking about the 16, the 12 to 16 hours before you, your head even hits the pillow at night. So I'm talking about the minute you wake up to what you do dur uh, during the day until you go to bed. This is really your before bed routine. It really is. These things, everything that you do during the day actually ultimately adds up and actually helps you um, either have a really great sleep or not. So um. One of the tips that I recommend is that you get a blue light, um, blue light blocker sunglasses and I actually really encourage you to use these every day throughout the day, especially if you're on the computer all day long. It will just help eliminate the blue light that's getting fed into your eyes that it could ultimately diminish your um, melatonin later on when you're actually needing a boost of it to actually fall asleep and have a really great sleep. So um, I encourage you to um, look into that. You can easily pick those up on Amazon. They're not even pricey, so they're absolutely well worth it for as an investment into your health. Um, I definitely recommend that you um, actively get light exposure before 9am and so head out for an early morning walk hopefully the sun's up but you can get that in before you head to work maybe or before you get stuck into the day um, it's really important for your circadian rhythm and for your uh, melatonin later in the in the basically at night time to it is actually started that melatonin process is started early in the morning that day so you actually want to get outside sit outside if you can't get out for a walk and soak up some sun rays for at least half an hour and so um, that's one thing that you can do and you know where we, you may be stuck at home <laughs> I'm stuck at home right now in restrictions during this pandemic and so um, if you've got a little bit of time on your hands then I definitely recommend that you do the morning one and you also do an e uh, yeah, afternoon solar noon sunbathing time you actually schedule that in basically so you want to head outside bang on 12 12 30 
from you ultimately want to stay outside for about half an hour i recommend that you cover your face and um sunbathe basically so that the sun is absorbed into your skin um sun actually turns into vitamin c in your body and it's a hormone and you actually absorb it through your skin so you don't want to ultimately um have a shower afterwards or go for a swim you want to take it in you want to soak it up through with um, exposing as much skin as possible and um yeah you'll just um, have to experiment to see if these two additions to your day actually help you have a better sleep at night um, another thing to try is um, magnesium and calcium supplements maybe you need to get your um, calcium levels checked magnesium is a little one of a little bit of a hard one to get checked you can but it's not necessarily um Easy, easy to check through blood work so but um check to your doctor and see if that's something that you might want to add to your um, supplement regime and take those at night and definitely best to mix magnesium and calcium together because they work really well together and um, potentially giving you a really restful sleep um, another tip is to have a cool room so um, regardless of the season making sure that you have your windows open and um, you know the doors open into your room and if you don't want to have like a um, window open right in your room then make sure that the rest of your house is really cool and you've got some windows open in the rest of the house so that it does decrease the temperature overall into your bedroom and that's something that you also need to experiment with too cold not the best thing it's a goldilocks thing you know <laughs> you want to have it like just right for you ultimately so um you'll have to experiment with that one Another thing that could have potentially help you fall asleep is increasing your body temperature at night. Um, you've probably heard that having a um, bath before you go to sleep is really helpful. The key is to have it um, a bath or a hot, a warm, well not hot hot, <laughs> but like um, a warm to hot shower probably about two hours before bed is a really great tip so that you actually do have actually a chance to decrease your body temperature. That's ultimately the key. So you're increasing your body temperature as you have your shower and your body's working over time to decrease that and it's that shift that can actually sleep, send you into a really um, sleepy slumber so give that a try um, when you're getting your magnesium and calcium levels checked um, definitely definitely ask your doctor to check your vitamin d levels um, this can play a part in having crappy sleep um, it's kind of a funny one i've done a lot of research on vitamin d and there seems to be a weird relationship <laughs> with like low levels of vitamin d can actually cause crappy sleep but also high levels of vitamin d through excessive supplements or even just taking supplements can actually give you a crappy sleep so again this is something that you're going to have to experiment with um, if you are low on vitamin d which you, you'll discuss with your doctor obviously you want to get your vitamin d levels up because it is such an important um, vitamin for so many functions in your body but you're going to have to tweak whether it actually helps you sleep if you take it in the evening if you take it in the morning or even if you reduce the dose so that's something that you really truly have to experiment with because there is no clear-cut answer with that one um, one more um, tip for the sleep is to really limit your time in bed oh i've got a spelling mistake there <laughs> um limit your time in bed before the lights go out so um if you love to read um before you go to sleep then definitely read out in the lounge and um head into bed probably about 10 minutes prior to five ten minutes prior to you actually wanting to turn your lights out just so that you actually um spend less time in bed and um get into bed go to sleep and when you wake up you want to be doing the same thing on the other end it's just a really good habit to get into and your your bed is then um you're associating your bed with sleep purely okay and so as i mentioned all about what you do during the day is so 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 important in terms of having a really fantastic sleep at night um just some other tips there are just making sure that you get a lot of daylight exposure um, on your skin and your eyeballs basically your retinas and um, that will help regulate your circadian cycle and also boost melatonin at the right time in the evening um, you probably already know and aware that um, having excessive ca uh, caffeine during the day or after a certain set point usually uh, one or two o'clock in the afternoon can impact some people's sleep so again experiment 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 and um, you're looking at your stress relief your purpose, emotions, I mean, those are completely massive subjects. Um, too wide too wide and deep for this webinar, but it just gives you an idea of things that you need to think about that could actually be negatively impacting your sleep. 
Okay, so um, just touch on these briefly because I just want to give you some really fast, actionable tips. Um, it's possible that you might need to increase your carb intake before you go to bed. And a lot of people <laughs> have always like battled this one with me, thinking that having carbs not necessarily late at night but in the evening can lead to them gaining weight and again this is something that you have to experiment with but it's possible that if you follow a keto diet or you are low carb especially as a woman you're under the age of 50 you're between that 35 to 50 year old age bracket if you eliminate too many carbs you can actually really really screw up your sleep so i really highly recommend that you incorporate something like sweet potatoes you can bring in like um, whole grain pastas if that suits your body um, and you can bring in some starchy vegetables as well just to see if those things actually help you sleep better and um if you are eating lighter in the evenings, maybe you actually need to eat a little bit more so that your blood sugar doesn't actually drop throughout the night. And so again, this is something that you have to think about um, for yourself to see what works for you because we're all different and something, you know, a lot of things aren't clear cut and um, plain and simple, you know, just easily done for each person. So um, experiment, experiment, experiment. Um, as I mentioned, your blood sugar may drop if you don't eat enough in the PM. So um, one thing that has been a tried and true trick that a lot of my clients have actually tried and successfully helped them to fall asleep is having apple cider vinegar and honey before bed. It's just a boost of um, simple sugars and it actually gets them through the night so that they can actually have a really great sleep without them actually jolting awake because their blood sugar's dropped. Again, test it out see how that works for you. Um, as I mentioned, you get the blue blocker sunglasses from Amazon and um, I do recommend them wearing them all day, you know, if you're going to be sitting in front of the computer. But definitely, definitely, if you if you don't feel comfortable doing that, definitely a couple of hours before you head into bed and whenever you are on a device, basically. Um, you, you've probably heard the tried and true method of uh, making sure that you have night mode or amber lighting on your devices after a certain time just to pre prevent that blue light from blocking your melatonin production so that's definitely important um a lot of us are so used to reading our digital books in bed or um flicking through something on our ipad our laptops you know maybe this is your chance to switch to physical books or even an audio book before bed and seeing if it actually has a really positive impact on your um sleep i know that for myself i used to read a kindle and even that was like a bit of a um, deterrent for having a really restful sleep so i've just switched to physical books <laughs> i've got like a library of books and um i've got my little night that just shines directly on the pages but it's not hitting my eyes so um, yeah physical books seems to be the way to go for myself so that's something you're going to have to um, experiment for yourself as well um, as I mentioned don't get into bed when you're ready to turn the lights out and getting that sun exposure during the day is super super important so um, I briefly touched on processing your emotions so journaling regularly is very, very important just to purge your emotions during um, any stressful time. I mean, the world is crazily stressful right now, so definitely important to get that out there. Um, meditation, hey, if it's your thing, definitely recommend doing it. AM is perfect. If you want to do it in the evening, make sure you do it at least a couple of hours before you actually go to sleep, just so you don't kind of ease into getting sleepy and then you kind of get the wired but tired thing, which really sucks, and then you can't actually fall asleep when you want to. So um, again, experiment with that. Um, another important thing that I really recommend if you're finding it hard to fall asleep or have a restful sleep, I highly recommend that you actually finish eating by 5 p.m even earlier if you can. Um, I personally have helped a lot of my clients get great sleep by having them finish their last meal at 3 or 4 p.m. I know that's crazy but we're going to talk about that a little bit later on in terms of um, modifying your eating um, schedule basically but again experiment um cutting out sugar has always 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 had such a huge and positive impact on my clients so absolutely recommend that that's something that you think about and um, protein can be important for you before bed it could help you regulate your blood sugar and have a great sleep and some people find that having too much protein before bed gives them a crappy sleep and they're better off on vegan based meals at dinner time so I'm going to keep repeating myself like a broken doll. <laughs> experiment, experiment, experiment. It's so important that you try out a bunch of things and figure out what works for you because you're going to know immediately, you know, like give yourself a week and you'll basically get a pattern of what's working best for you. Alrighty, let's move on to mistake number two. 
Okay, so we're going to be focusing on goals versus processes for this mistake. So ultimately, a mistake that a lot of women make, or people in general, make when setting goals is that they focus on the goal, like the broad, I want to lose 20 kilos or 20 pounds, versus the actual process of getting that goal to actually come true. So um, you really want to focus on the step-by-step -step actions. So say your um, goal is to ultimately stop drinking fizzy drinks or soft drinks. And so instead of just having that as your goal and then walking away and thinking, great, I've set a goal, hope it comes true, you know, you're going to be actually breaking it down and thinking of the process that you need to implement to actually reach that particular goal. So so instead of saying you want to cut out all um, soft drinks, never drink soft drinks or fussy drinks ever again, you want to basically set a process of say maybe on your um, calendar, block out 10 days in which you will literally not have any soft drinks or fizzy drinks. Or, you know, you might prefer to limit it to one time per week on a Sunday at say 2 o'clock in the afternoon or lunchtime or whatever suits you. You've got a specific actionable plan that is something tangible that you can actually do. Um, another thing, um, another goal that you might have is reducing your um, eating out and so you're going to specifically say hey look I want to eat out once per week on a Saturday and only at dinner time so again just practical actionable and you know exactly where you stand it's either a yes or a no that you did that it's just clear cut um, you can also um, use this with your workouts and you're going to map out each of your workouts each day so Monday I do lower body Tuesday I do upper body Wednesday I do abs and I go for a long walk you know exactly what you're doing and you can plan that out for a couple of weeks at a time and um, tweak but you just have a true um, process in place with actionable steps so that's something that's really important um, focusing on the goal versus the process is is literally um, one of the biggest sabotaging um, aspects of losing weight. A lot of people think that just because they've set a goal of, say, losing 20 pounds in 12 weeks, that you know the hardest part is done. And it's 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 one step, <laughs> but it's really important that you focus on the process. So. Um, Write out your health and wellness goals, any goal for that matter, and then really decide and hone down in and get super, super um, um, micro on what it is that you need to focus on each and every day. So um, as I went through those examples before, um, you can just use those for any of your goals and really just get totally down into the nitty gritty detail for each of them. Alrighty, so let's move on to uh, mistake number three. Um, this is this is a really huge one, especially for us women over the age of 35. Um, it's basically ignoring the role of hormones on well, basically everything. Our weight, our sleep, our energy, our desire levels, our um, just so much, our looks, <laughs> you know. So um, it's really... Um, it's making you aware that, you know, it's important that you get your hormone levels tested. And um, hopefully um, your doctor, you've got a great doctor who is encouraging you to get these hormones tested. But if they're not, then um, you're going to have to be really aggressive to um, make sure that you um, get these these markers basically and figure out what it is that you need to tweak and change so that you are really optimal and um, feeling amazing. So um, I would definitely recommend that you get um, your testosterone levels checked, your estrogen levels checked, your progesterone, your thyroid hormones and then there's a lot of sub hormones as part of that as well so you need to talk to your doctor about that that you want a full blood panel with um, checking a full range of hormones. Um, these hormones play a massive role in um, your weight and so this is a focus for many of us you know we want our weight to be great <laughs> we want it to be at our ideal weight um, we know that sleep plays into that to lose the weight we know that if we lose some weight and we're sleeping well we're obviously going to have a lot more energy and it really feeds into us feeling sexy and um, feeling desirable and having that oomph to want to like get sexy <laughs> so um it all leads to that and it's all related that all a symphony of important aspects that um, need to be tested and um, then you can really start to think about what needs to be tweaked so that you can actually start to lose the weight um, this um, I've talked about the imbalance of cortisol um, hormones this is a really huge one you can actually get um, saliva or um, urine dry a dry urine test done to actually check what your hormones are doing throughout the day and cortisol is tested as well and that 
that's a really important one because sometimes um, your cortisol levels can be um, out of whack and you can have high cortisol which actually leads to increased abdominal fat it um, has like a um, relationship with insulin so insulin resistance also leads to abdominal fat and all of these again everything is related so um, we have different levels of hormones throughout our menstrual cycle as you probably know and um, we need to start looking at what's happening throughout our menstrual cycle so that we can tweak the different hormones at different points of our cycle so that we are feeling really great sleeping through the night which ultimately leads into us losing weight and feeling really good energetic wise so um the first step absolutely talk to your doctor and figure out what needs to be tweaked for you um and just briefly on touch on that cutting calories could actually backfire on you um a lot of women have always default to the tried and true method of cutting calories to lose weight and that's something that may have like been beneficial for you back when you were like 20 in your 20s even early 30s and um at this point of our life over 35s it's a really it's a tricky habit to get it's a tricky habit to do because it could actually backfire in you, mess up your hormones, and then you're actually, you could lose a bit of um, water weight, you could lose a little bit of fat, but then ultimately your metabolism could actually drop, and then you're actually gaining back the weight that you think you lost, or that you did, but you cut calories, and it's just messed up everything, so um, that's something to think about, um, it's the same with cutting carbs, a lot of women who are in their prime, and their 35s, to 50 year old um, age bracket they do keto and you know they see their partners or male friends getting great results and they think that you know like they want to they want to try that strategy and um, it might not be for you you know you could even have a girlfriend who does um, keto and gets really great results and loses a lot of weight but again it might not be right for you so these are things that you need to think about and also their um, domino effect on your hormones so Definitely, definitely, definitely talk to your doctor, get all your hormone panel done and um, blood tests and just check what you're doing, um, how your body's to cope doing. And um, I highly recommend that you do a saliva or dry urine test so you can really get a good idea of some of the hormones that don't necessarily um, give you the best result through blood work. So um, that's something to um, think about as well. Um, if you are going to be um, doing the keto diet, definitely recommend that you go low carb in the first half of your cycle. We're a lot more resilient and our hormones are a lot um, they're a lot more um, adaptable to us going low carb in the first half of our cycle. And you can actually get some really great results if you lower your carb intake. Again, you're going to have to play around with um, how low you need to go. We all need carbs. You know, our bodies run on um fat carbs and proteins and they are all useful <laughs> um obviously that's debatable how much of each but um again this is something that you're going to have to like tweak and experiment with yourself to actually see what works best for you um in your latter half of your cycle you want to focus on eating complex carbs so um bringing them in don't necessarily have to go crazy and have a lot of carbs but um thinking about the sweet potatoes um bringing in pasta bringing in rice and um if you are having sleep issues maybe experimenting with having that in the um earliest evening and see if that helps you actually have a um, restful sleep during that, that cycle and also if that actually makes you feel good um I did touch on this briefly in the sleep thing that you could ultimately what might want to work towards fasting in the a.m. So having breakfast um, in the morning, say eight o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning, having lunch and having dinner by 5 p.m. or even 4 p.m. or even 3 p.m. <laughs> um, that's definitely helpful. And you can even experiment with flipping it and doing it in um, reverse, basically, where you are skipping breakfast and having a late lunch and then dinner and then fasting through the night. And um it's interesting, I used to really endorse the skipping breakfast and having a late lunch as the fasting method that ultimately helped me lose weight. But then as I've gotten older, <laughs> I've actually found it more useful to flip it and actually have breakfast, have a really, really great full breakfast and um, have a really super early dinner and then fast through the night. And I've actually slept better and I've um, since introduced that to some of my clients. And the, it's it's honestly a mixed bag. Some people get great results flipping it and some people are happier with the... Um, fasting in the a.m. so again it's super personal and you're gonna to have to figure out what works for you um, with this rule you just want to create mini goals and just work out um, you know 
what can you do for like say even a 10 day period um it's ultimately about you just um figuring out little you know little bits of um tweaks at a time so you can really kind of do your own mini experiment on what actually works for you to feel really great that's the ultimate goal Okay, so I briefly touched on that I've got a flat belly kitchen um, program and um, I would love to help you if you're struggling with your weight loss or you're needing help with um, boosting your energy. If you're transitioning through this very strange perimenopausal time, which is truly natural and it happens to every woman, but it does come with its own challenges, so it can be a little bit daunting. Um, I would love to help you out one-on-one -on -one personally and so this flat belly kitchen program is an online program where I touch on absolutely everything nutrition exercise lifestyle habits and it's all psychology and science based advice and facts so nothing is um, it's, it's based on real science so it's it's um, proven to help a woman over the age of 35 to actually get results so um, if you're in that age bracket you know you know that we have unique challenges and so that's why I would love to be able to work with you I've got a couple of options here you can either work with me one-to-one -one and um, I can help you work through this with a real personalized approach or you can go at it yourself following the plan and um, you'll still get phenomenal results just by tweaking some things in your day-to-day -day lifestyle um, I just want to show you some of the testimonials. Um, I've had an opportunity to train um, many women and an amazing group of women that I actually trained was um, for this, um, for the Glossy Magazine Women's Day. I trained a group of four women and I took them through my program and they truly got phenomenal results. Um, so Lee, who I still keep in touch with now, she's she's just kept the weight off for like 10 plus years. She's done such a phenomenal job. Um, in six weeks of the program, she lost over eight kilos um, and she dropped from a size 18 to a 16 um, and she just you know is so much more confident and happy in her body and she really truly looks amazing now um, Jackie she in six weeks she lost 12 kilos which is absolutely phenomenal she went from 95 kilos to 83 kilos and um, she dropped from a size 18 to a 14 and lost over 35 centimeters around her whole body which is absolutely amazing and um, you know it's truly possible if you focus on a few tweaks in your in your lifestyle another um, testimony I've got is Siobhan um, she did the program a few years back and um, she says do it do it do it <laughs> you have absolutely nothing to lose um, but inches it really works she had to buy a whole new wardrobe she went from 89 kilos to 70 kilos in just 60 days I was so proud of her she got absolutely phenomenal results and these are the ladies from the Women's Day I'll read through that so it's definitely possible to get really great results if you just tweak a few things. And as I mentioned throughout this whole um, webinar, it really is personal to you. And so I highly recommend that you work with me one-to-one -one so we can personalize the approach. And I'll be able to really um, help you tweak things just so that you can actually um, look at your hormones and um, we can change that working with your doctor and actually bring everything together. So it's not just workouts, exercise, I mean, uh, workouts, <laughs> nutrition, and mindset it really is looking at like your health what is actually going on so that we can tweak that to actually make those other elements work I think I'm losing my voice from talking too much um, so yeah I've had um, phenomenal results with my program with um, a range of women and um, yeah I just really recommend that if you are struggling with your weight or you're needing a, a little bit of help during this transition period that you think about joining the Flat Belly Kitchen program, you've got three options. Basically, you can do nothing and stay as you are. You can go it alone, basically, and um, you know do a lot of trial and error. Or you can get the Flat Belly Kitchen program, and I'll be able to work with you one on one and share with you everything I've learned and applied with all my clients to actually get them really great results. So um, I've worked with a lot of women, and it's truly a pleasure right now at this point in my life where I'm in my early. 40s and just wanting to help women out who are going through the same transition where it's just a little bit different <laughs> it's not as easy to lose the weight and we do have unique challenges so um yeah i'd love to absolutely help you with this if um, that is what's something that you're needing so um as i mentioned i've been doing this for 17 years um i literally <laughs> discovered everything the hard way and i want you to get the shortcut so that you can actually get results a lot faster so let me help you join up for my flat belly kitchen program i'd love to be able to help you have um, more energy feel and look slim 
slimmer, ultimately change your habits so that you can head into your later part of your life feeling a lot healthier, establishing firm um, lifestyle changes and ultimately getting into a place where you know you've really got a handle on what works for you and um, we're all changeable you know what worked for you like I mentioned um, when you were 20 you know it doesn't work when we're in our 30s or our 40s so um this flat belly kitchen program is designed for women over the age of 35 it's truly tailored to the differences um the hormonal differences we have to deal with um, and it's just it's all about tweaking personal things for you it, nothing is um, one size fits all this is all about working with you to figure out what works for you so um, as I mentioned it's merging psychology and science and it's all about getting you the long-term results so as I mentioned, love to help you out. Um, for the fast action takers for this um, Flat Belly Kitchen offer, I would love to offer you a free 15-minute Zoom consult with me. And we can also chat by email and I'll be able to actually help you out with some personalized advice. I've got a couple of options for you. So head over to flatbellykitchen.com. And um, yeah, I'd love to have you on the program. It's all about one size fits you. Nothing is um, set. We're not going to tell you to eat cottage cheese. Um, if that's something you absolutely hate, I mean, I wouldn't even recommend that anyway, but I'm just saying that there are a lot of generic things out there and it's really hard for us to personalize it to what we need. So this program, Flat Belly Kitchen, is truly about making it personal to you. So head on over to flatbellykitchen.com and um, join the program. Love to talk to you and love to help you out. So um, talk soon. Thanks. Bye.